In this presentation, we're finally to the point we've all been waiting for, the population of the form W-2. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. This is a copy of a W-2 from the IRS website at irs.gov. It's just an example form to show us what uh, the form will look like. We'll then use a mock form in Excel to pick up our information. Note that the W-2 form is one that we've all probably received. The W-2 form telling us how much we have earned and the withholdings that we then use in order to report our responsibility, our taxes, and related withholdings on our Form 1040. It's also important to note that the W-2, once we get it, we should automatically think and know that when we receive a W-2 that the another copy has been sent to the government. So the government has a copy of the W-2. So we're voluntarily required to report this information on the Form 1040. However, they're already aware of it on, uh, the, on the IRS side as well. So if we do not report our information from the W-2 properly, then uh, we'll almost surely get noticed on it. Uh, we'll get a notification saying that there's an error because it has been reported. In other words, we as the employer are going to send a copy to our employees as well as a copy to the government. As we can see, this form consists of uh, the employer identification number, the EIN number that uh, we're going to have to report. Again, that's the employer special number for reporting payroll taxes. Then the employer's name and address, a control number, the employee's first name, last name, uh, employee's zip code, so all the uh, data information in order to know who we're talking about here. And then we'll get into the boxes, which can be more confusing than we may think when we first look at this, meaning if we were to look at uh, a W-2 and say how much does someone earn, most people would probably look at box 1. But box one is probably the most deceiving to look at because uh, box one is related to the federal income tax and it could be reduced by things like a cafeteria plan or a retirement plan. So it could be significantly less than actual earnings, in other words, because earnings are, you know, retirement plan and cafeteria plan, things like that are still significant. They represent earnings, they represent compensation, and they're not included in the wages in box one. So this, this represents wages related to calculating our um, 1040 federal income tax. Box 2 is, of course, the withholdings for the federal income tax. Box 3 also represents wages, but may differ from Box 1 because it has different uh, deductions would be involved. In other words, the 401k or a retirement plan may not be included as a deduction from Social Security wages, whereas it would for uh, the wages in federal income tax and they may have hit the cap here which will change from year to year which means that this is not a reliable number either especially as to how much someone actually earns especially if they're a high earner because it's going to be capped that'll be used to calculate the social security tax so here's the social security tax in box four medicare wages probably the highest wages probably the of the three the highest um, most accurate box to look at for total wages, it still may not represent total compensation because of deductions um, from gross wages for Medicare, which could include something like a cafeteria plan. Uh, and we could find that would be reported in box 12B, uh, in, in somewhere in box 12, and have a an indication, which I believe would be a DD, which would show us what that uh, Medicare or what the insurance would be. And then we have the Medicare tax tax withheld here, uh, Social Security tips, allocated tips, uh, verification code, dependent care benefits, and then uh, not qualified plans. And um, then we've got the box 12, which we're going to report amongst other things, but we're going to report uh, here. What will often be reported here is if there's a retirement plan and if there's some kind of uh, cafeteria or insurance plan here as well. Uh, then we have these these items which are showing whether there is a retirement plan. So we have to select uh, whether there is or not. Other, and then the state information down here. State identification number, state wages, state income tax, local taxes, and the state withholdings. If we move to the form W-3, so the W-3 form is going to be 
very similar to the W-2 form in that it, it'll, in essence, it will just basically summarize the data. So if we were to, in other words, add up all the W-2 forms for box one, then that should add up and sum to box one on the W-3. So you can think of the W-3 as sort of like a W-2 as if all employees were combined into one individual. It's going to be the reconciling form or the summing up form of all W-2s. So you got box one wages, box two social security wages, box three Medicare wages, which should add up to the sum of all W-2, box one, box two, and three respectively. Same as box two federal income tax withheld, box four social security tax withheld, and box six Medicare. So let's we're going to look at a, kind of a mock of this form here so that we can fill this out. So we got a similar kind of form. We're going to fill out the blue area here, and uh, we've tried to give a you know, close representation of the of these boxes here. Okay, so we're going to start with the W-2 information, and we're just going to try to fill this stuff out as we would from our register. Obviously, it would be very nice in a, in a system where this would happen automatically or auto um, from a computer system, but we're going to pick this up. So we're going to go through the earnings records for each employee. So if we go back to the register, and I'm scrolling up, to the top we've frozen the panes so i still froze the panes up here that's going to be on cell m4 m4 then go to the view tab windows group frozen panes and freeze the panes and then we're going to scroll to the right to the earnings records so here's the earnings records this is the information per employee and that's of course what we need when we're working with um, the payroll so we'll start with anthony here so anthony is our first employee and we'll just pick this information up so first we're starting with the the uh, wages and compensation i'm going to say that's going to be equal to and then go back to our register for anthony now uh, you would think it'd be total earnings but remember we're going to subtract from that the um 401k any retirement plan if it, if the cafeteria if this was a uh, cafeteria plan then it would be subtracted too. We're saying it's not here. So this is not going to be a reduction uh, from gross wages. So it's just the 401k. So there we have that. And then the federal withholdings, the FIT, so I'm in I, uh, I5 equals. We'll go back to our earnings. And we're going to pick up the FIT. This is the 921. And enter. And then we'll go to the Social Security wages, which equals, we're going to go back to our register. And we've got the Social Security wages. It's the same as the total earnings. It would only, it would differ if they hit the cap or if there's some deduction for Social Security, which would include a cafeteria plan, uh, which this is, we're saying again, that's not. So it's going to be the 20. Note that they're going to be different. Social Security tax withheld, we're going to say equals. And go back to our form, our uh, our records and earnings records, <laughs> and we're looking for the Social Security withheld, which is this item, and enter, and then Medicare wages equals back to our records. Now we're going to say it's the total. It would only differ if there was something deductible from Medicare, which would be uh, something like a cafeteria plan. So we don't have anything, so we're just going to pick, the, it's just going to be equal to the total earnings. Then we have the Medicare tax withheld. So we're just going to say that that equals and go back to our register. We're looking for HI. So that's Medicare, HI, hospital insurance. And then we got that. So that's going to be the major components here. So note that the most accurate number is typically the Medicare. This one's going to be accurate here in terms of total wages earned. And uh, wage compensation here is actually the, the least accurate because it's it could be reduced significantly depending on if someone took advantage of something like a retirement plan, which we highly recommend doing if you have the opportunity to do so. Okay, so then we're going to go down to uh, box 12A. And box 12A is where we're going to put that uh, retirement plan. So within box 12A, we're going to say equals and go back to the register. And we're going to pick up that uh 1115 and that's the retirement plan so of course 
if you look at a W-2, then typically the difference between, say, the Medicare 2812.5 and box one, 19796.85, is represented down here. And if you look up the symbol, D typically will be um, for some type of retirement plan. Now, if, if this was a cafeteria plan, then um, we would have the cafeteria plan with the DD. So we're not, or, or if there's an employer sponsor plan, it would be here. Uh, we're not gonna have that here because uh, we're saying that that's included in the wages up in uh, line five. But just note that if you had uh, something like a DD down here, that would mean that uh, you had something like a cafeteria plan. And then this number really wouldn't even represent, of the three numbers, this being the highest number, the most representative of income, would still be low, too low in order to get to the actual income by the amount of um, cafeteria plan that would be then reported on 12B. In line 13, usually there's going to be different types of, you know, three boxes here. I'm just going to say the retirement plan and put an X to say that we have the retirement plan here. That's basically going to be it here. So I've got the uh, employee's name and we're going to leave it at that. We just want to go through these numbers broadly and see how this thing will tie out to then the W-3. So if we scroll back down, we're going to take a look at the next W-2. We've got four of these to fill out. So the next W-2 is going to be here, and we're looking for Cindy Lewis. So if we go back to our register, I'm just going to scroll down. So if I go to the, to the left a little bit, I'm going to scroll down just so we can see Cindy's data. So there's that. And then go back to our W-2. Okay, so we're just going to do the same thing. In box one, we've got the wages compensation equals back to our register. It's going to be the uh, total earnings. I'm going to scroll to the right, minus, minus uh, the 401k, right? And not, not that it would be subtract the insurance if it was a uh, cafeteria. And then we're going to have the federal withholding equals. We're going to go back to the register and we're going to pick up the FIT. Then we're going to go to the social security wages equals. We're going to go back to the register and pick up the social security differing from, or well, it could differ, it's not differed now, but it could based on if they hit the cap or if there's a cafeteria or some other uh, reduction for social security, those being the main ones. And then social security taxes withheld equals back to our earnings records. We're gonna go to this item. And then our Medicare wages equals Going back to our earnings, it's going to be equal to the total. And again, that one would only differ because there is no cap if there was some deduction for Medicare, such as a cafeteria plan. So enter. And then we're going to go to I-33 equals back to our earnings records. And we're picking up Medicare HI and enter. Okay, so that's going to be the main components, Social Security tips, vacation, dependent care, non-qualified, and then we're going to pick up the um, retirement plan equals. We're going to go back to our records and pick up the 401k. And again, if this was a cafeteria, um, then it would be here and not included in these lines as income. However, it for us is included in these lines and therefore we're not reporting it here on 12B. Okay, so then we're gonna scroll down to the next employee. So, and we're gonna go over to our register and do the same thing. We're gonna scroll down to the next employee. Uh, and that's gonna be Jill Jackson. So we're gonna scroll down. Okay, I'm gonna to scroll to, to the right a bit so we can see the data we're gonna be using most and then go back to our information here. So. Uh, I'm going to delete this for now. Okay, we'll start with box one equals. Go back to our register. It's going to be the total earnings minus the 401k. Enter. Then the federal income tax equals. We can go back to our register. Federal income tax is going to be the FIT. Then the social security wages equals back to the register. It's going to be this one, still the same because there's no cap, didn't hit the cap. 
and there's no other deduction for Social Security. And then, uh, whoop, I put it in the wrong area. It's going to be here. Social Security wages will be this item. And then Social Security in box 12, the amount that we actually withheld, it's going to be equal to the OASDI. And then we're going to go to the Medicare wages, which will equals back to the earnings record. We're going to say Medicare wages is going to be equal to the total earnings, unless there was some other type of deduction from it, like a, like a cafeteria. So we're going to say no, it's going to be that. Medicare withholding equals back to our earnings. And we're going to say that that is the HI here. Enter. And then Social Security, uh, nothing here. We got a retirement plan. We should have a, a retirement plan here. And then the other thing we want is our 401k here. We're going to say this equals go back and pick up the 401k. Okay. And, and again, no cafeteria plan because um, it's included. It's not going to be DD at least because this would mean that it would not be included in uh, 1, 3, and 5, and ours is. All right, last employee, we're going to scroll back down. We've got uh, the big earner, big earner down here, which is Judy Jones. So we're going to go back, scroll down to Judy Jones. If we scroll over, we're looking at Judy Jones here. We're going to scroll back down, and we're going to go all the way to the right to the data that we are working with. Uh, with total earnings here. So go back to here. Box 1 is going to equal back to our register. It's going to be equal to the total earnings uh, minus the 401k and enter. And then box 2 is going to equal and we're going to go back to our register the FIT and enter. Then box 3 is going to equal the social security wages and this is where she has hit the limit. So that's why we have a different Social Security wages that she's capped out at the 128400 So this number will be different than this number. Social Security taxes equals. And we go to the Social Security tax, which is this number. Enter. Note, in essence, that's the max tax you can pay because it's maxed out at the cap. And then the Medicare wages for this particular problem. That cap could change over time. So Medicare wages, back to the register, it's going to be the same as the total earnings because there is no cap and we don't have any other reductions for Medicare. And then the Medicare tax equals, back to the register, the HI, enter. Okay, and that's going to be main of, the most of it. We're going to say that there is a retirement plan and we're going to pick up the 401k here in 12A equals, back to the register, the 401k and enter. Okay, so now we're just going to sum this information up on the W3. So we're just going to basically pick up all box 1s, box 2s, box 5s from our information over here. So box 1 equals, and scroll back over, this number plus this number for our next employee plus same number for our third employee plus same number for our fourth employee and there's our total wages if we want to reconcile that it should be equal to our totals if we scroll down to to our totals down here it should be equal to the 241 206 minus the 13 one, three, 871 for all employees, 227, 335. So here's the 227, 335. And then the federal income tax is going to be equal. And we'll go back to all the way back up. Federal This number for our first employee, same number for our second employee, same number for our third employee. <laughs> Where's the third employee? Same number for our fourth employee, and enter. And then again, that number, 42,215. If we go back to our earnings record for all employees, 42,215 for FIT, 42,215.66.
and then we'll go back to our records here. Social Security is going to equal on the W3, it's going to equal Social Security for our first employee, wages, Social Security wages for our second employee, Social Security wages for our third employee, Social Security wages for our fourth employee, and enter. If we double check that number on the W3 to our records, we're looking at this number, 194606. That should be equal to the 194606. Then the Social Security tax withheld for the W-3 will equal the tax withheld for our W-2 first employee, for the W-2 second employee, for the W-2 third employee, for the W-2 uh, fourth employee. Enter. And then that number, Social Security tax withheld, should match our earnings records for all employees, 126557. Uh, Back to our W-2, 1265.57. Medicare, last one. We're going to scroll over. Medicare wages for the first employee plus Medicare wages for the second employee plus Medicare wages for the third employee plus Medicare wages for the fourth employee. Enter. If we double check that number, 241.202 to our records. For Medicare, we're going to say Medicare wages is total rate wages, 241,206. 241,206. Yeah, that's right. And then taxes for Medicare equals taxes for the first employee, taxes for the second employee, taxes for the third employee for Medicare, and finally taxes for the fourth employee. And then we can double check that Medicare taxes here. 349749. That's going to be equal to 349749 for the total. So that in essence is the W2 and the W3. You can see the W3 is just basically summing up all of the W2s uh, and, and providing that information. Note that when we look at these numbers, the most accurate number really is this Medicare wages, and it may not even re represent all wages that have been earned if there's something that was deducted from Medicare, such as a cafeteria plan. This number often is not very representative of actual earnings because the social, the uh, retirement plan is significant to reduce. And if there's a high earner, this number will not be representative of all. If someone earns, um, you know, if you have a lot of people over the cap, that'll be too low. So this number is actually probably closest, it is usually closest to actual earnings uh, for, for the W-2 and the W-3. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.